I'm Bob Harris for Duraman Engineered Products. We're getting ready to install Param SSL and one of the most important factors is uh, preparing the substrate properly. For more information on how to prepare the substrate, refer to the Duraman website uh, to address issues on crack repair, spalls, chips and divots, and the right profile. One of the first things uh, that you do is after you have actually prepared the substrate is you prime with CP1000. Now there's a multitude of ways that you can apply the CP1000. Some people will simply put it in a mop bucket and mop the product down. Uh, that's obviously insurance that you're getting enough product down to completely close off the pore structure of the concrete. Sometimes you'll have applicators that will spray apply the CP1000 and then back roll. Regardless of the way that you put it down, make certain you're putting the uh, appropriate amount down, which can be found in the technical documents or the tech data sheets. Um, you definitely want to make certain that you have enough down. Oftentimes, too, they'll simply dump some on the floor and use a medium um, bristled broom and brush it into the floor. Point being, it's covering everything, every square inch of that uh, substrate. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting a coat of CP1000 down right now. Now usually you want to wait a minimum of eight hours. So what most applicators will do is they will do all of their necessary preparation with the concrete surface profile, addressing cracks, divots, um, and then they'll clean the floor, prime that afternoon or evening, let it dry overnight, and be uh, back on the job site the very next morning to install the Param SSL. So we're simply on the small sample board, going to dump um, CP1000 down, and we're going to prime. Now look, on really porous substrates, uh, you may need to double prime. Obviously, this is what I would consider a very porous accepting um, sample board or substrate. So we will double prime. Uh, and the reason for priming, it serves two functions. One, it acts as an adhesive for the Param SSL to adhere to. But just as important, if not more important, is it seals the porosity of the concrete. If you don't prime properly with a product like this, when you install the product, it'll flash dry on you. And you don't want that. So it's really crucial that you get the appropriate amount down. You can see how fast this is absorbing in. And what that's going to do is, if you prime it properly, it's going to give you the necessary time to install the product, and more importantly, to go back out onto the product and do a second troweling, which gives the look and feel of polished concrete. It's a very handcrafted, organic look when executed properly. All right, we're back on our um, previously primed sample board here. We primed it with CP1000. Roughly eight hours has transpired, and now we're getting ready to uh, mix up our Param SSL, which stands for semi-self-leveling. It's a unique product in the sense that it, it enables the craftsperson to go back out on spike knee boards and second trowel it, so it gives you the look and feel of a polished surface or hard troweled concrete. We're also going to be demonstrating uh, a really interesting product, which is referred to as Color Fast, and uh, refer to the Duraman color chart. Uh, it shows you the product or the different colors over a gray base versus a white base. Um, and there's a variety of ways that you can use that product as well. We'll demonstrate two options. Number one, we'll pour out a couple of ribbons of the, uh, the Param SSL. We'll hand broadcast into the, into the ribbon, and then we're going to use what's called a turbo roller to kind of blend it. We'll trial that, and then uh, as a secondary option, we'll hand broadcast. We refer to that as a flashing accent color. So you just simply hand broadcast onto the already troweled surface and then kind of marbleize and blend that in. It gives a very interesting effect. And the nice thing about the product, it's a, it's a one application system. So in essence, if you've done your priming properly, you can put the uh, Param SSL down, work with the colors, trowel it, and you can get it all done in one system. Of course, uh, you'd come back and put a coating or a sealer over the top of that. Um, safety is, is not a laughing matter. It's a very serious issue. Anytime you're working with a cement-based product, um, when you mix, um, you have what's called airborne dust particulate. So you need to protect yourself from that at a minimum. Wear the proper mask, um, safety glasses. Also, for uh, us, us older guys that have been finishing concrete for a whole career, it's super important that you wear knee pads because um, although you don't know, um, you don't feel the effects today of, of what's happening if you don't properly protect yourself, 
when you get older, you know, all of these uh, issues can come out. So proper uh, knee protection is super important. Safety glasses as well. We're going to go ahead and mix up the uh, Pram SSL. Roughly the mix ratio is 1 to 1.2 gallons of clean water. So that's a, also a unique system, so it doesn't require um, a bonding primer as the mixed liquid. So you're just simply mixing uh, water into the, in, as part of the mix. So before you mix, what's important is that you always roll the bucket. What happens is as cement-based products sit on the shelf, um, they tend to consolidate down and you don't want to dump it into the bucket and have a big clump fall out. So you want to loosen the material by rolling it, turning it upside down. Once you've done that, we have our previously weighed water into the bucket. Now, I do like to recommend using a metal bucket. And the reason for that is sometimes when you um, mix in a plastic bucket, depending on the mixing paddle that you're using, it tends to shred the side of the bucket and you get little fibers of plastic when you're out trying to trial the material down. Um, so you can avoid that by using metal buckets. And you can completely reutilize these buckets assuming you keep it clean. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get ready and mix the Param SSL. Refer back to the technical data sheets for the mixing requirements and um, also the mix time. Okay. Generally, you're looking at somewhere in the vicinity of three minutes of uh, mixing time. Also, keep your materials cool, okay? You want to use cool water. It's going to extend the working time. Sometimes we'll even chill the water by taking uh, large, large vessels like a garbage can, for example, filling that with um, ice. Keep the ice in the, in the bags, and then you can dispense from that using chilled water. And it's just simply going to buy you time when you're out on the floor putting the material down and ultimately troweling it. So we'll get busy. All right, we've mixed our Param SSL for roughly three minutes, and it's now time to apply it. Um, keep in mind, we're going to be using um, Colorfast. We're going to be using um, putty and Potter's Clay Color. You can also mix this color into the actual mix. And if you do that, and you're tinting the cement, in essence, is what you're doing. If you do that, you can go as little as one eighth of uh, a cup all the way up to two cups. But for all general purposes, if you look at the Duraman uh, color chart, one cup of color fast goes into the water, and you pre-mix that, and then you put the Param SSL and mix that uh, uniformly. So you can use the, the color in a variety of ways. So what we're going to demonstrate is simply pour out a ribbon, like you see here. And one way to use the color is simply broadcast some of the color right into the mix like you see here. And then what we'll do is we'll use the um, turbo roller to blend and mix that. What you don't want to happen is you don't want to get powder out here on the substrate. That could actually be a bond breaker. So always try to keep the powder into the wet overlay and then blend it as necessary. Now this is uh, an important important tool here, and this is what's referred to as a turbo roller. And the reason it's important is it puts it precisely to the proper depth or elevation. You don't want to put these types of materials down too thick or too thin. And by using this, it puts it down at the exact thickness that enables the, the artisan or the craftsperson to come back and hand trowel it. So, the thickness is really crucial. Also, too, we discussed the mix requirements in terms of the water requirement. We had mentioned one gallon up to 1.2 gallons of water. 
cool water. Uh, and you may need to modify that. There's a lot of things that could ultimately affect the mix ratio, such as the substrate temperature, the ambient temperature, the powder uh, temperature. So when you see this, we're doing this purposely for demonstration reasons. If you look right here, technically this is a hair on the dry side because those ribbons that you see that are created from this texture roller should slightly close up. We refer to that as healing. Those little ridges should heal a little bit more than you're seeing here. So we would have, uh, on an actual project, made our modifications on our first batch and then continued that all the way through the application. So as another option, you can now hand broadcast, if you choose to, to create a marbleized effect. This material, this color fast material, is fairly concentrated, so a little bit goes a long way. So don't, don't overdo it in terms of how much you put on. Most of the professional applicators prefer a nice wide 20 inch trowel and you simply, first thing you want to do is you want to blend the material. And you notice I'm using a very random trowel stroke. I'm not doing the traditional concrete finishing technique which is a half arc like you see here. Okay? I try to avoid that by changing up the direction and the angle of how I trowel. And you can see how beautiful the colors when blended properly actually are. And a lot of times there's really not a need for a secondary or a third color like an acid stain or a dye unless of, of course the, the client is choosing colors. But this is what's beautiful about this type of a product is you can create all of your coloring at the time of the installation. I keep using overlapping strokes. Sometimes I'll cross it up, come back this direction. And then what we'll do is we'll wait uh, for a given time frame and we can't tell you exactly what that is because of the uh, ambient conditions. What you're looking for as the material starts to cure out, you're going to see areas that remain wet and areas that remain dry. So roughly when you see that surface where you see um, about 60% of the area is dry, in other words you see dry pockets, and the remaining 40 pockets or uh, areas are wet, that's when you want to get back out on the surface with spiked knee boards and you do what's called a second troweling. And you can really get this uh, laid down flat and as I mentioned earlier, it gives you the look and feel of polished concrete or hand troweled concrete. With today's conditions, roughly 20 minutes has uh, transpired and it's now time to what we refer to as second trowel this material. Now look, it's not mandatory that you second trowel it. In fact, you can see how nice this looks um, as is. Now keep in mind, if you were to only put it down with one troweling like you see here, it would definitely require uh, sanding the following day, minimum of 24 hours later. So you'd probably want to use somewhere in the vicinity of an 80 to a 100 grit sanding mesh or sanding screen to knock off the ridges. But if you don't want those ridges, this is what I referred to earlier as uh, spiked knee boards. You can in fact come out here and you're actually walking out on the material. This is uh, just demonstration purposes. And now we're going to second trial this material. And it's just it's an absolute opportune time right now for us to really slick this down. And again, focus on the motion of my trowel. I'm not simply just using half moon arcs. I'm kind of creating overlapping passes as you see here. Also notice the angle of my trowel. Things that can affect the troweling of this is any air movement. You can't have any air movement such as a door, um, vents. So you really need to try to control any air movement that comes across the surface because it's going to rapidly dry the surface and make it a little bit more difficult when it comes to troweling. But look how beautiful that is. It really kind of has the look and the feel of a marbleized surface all done in one application.